another test video with this new camera setup and the sound is going to be completely different this time because it's just using the built-in microphones and to me it sounds a little bit perhaps too harsh but maybe you guys think it's okay just let me know what you think in the comments down below uh, so some of you are asking when I did the cloud uh, light if it could be converted to RGB you know with the self color changing LEDs and that's a really good idea so let's do a couple of things uh, for a start I wanted to stay on all the time so I'm going to get rid of this transistor and when I get rid of the transistor, it just means the LEDs are built all the time. Um, I could get rid of the LDR. In fact, you know what? It'll be, make it easier to get the circuit board out if I get rid of the LDR. It's not needed anymore anyway. So, technically speaking, I could leave the transistor if I snip the LDR, but I might as well just snip them all out because uh, it means that it's just going to be lit all the time and that's how I want it to be operated. So let's uh, get this open. First of all, I've got my little cluster of RGB LEDs here. I now know that the best way to open this is to go in from the top of the cloud, oh, like that. So let's start chopping bits out. Let's chop out the transistor. Could chop transistors out. The colour temperature, by the way, I'm going to have to change the lighting here. And as some of you have mentioned, I'm going to possibly put a ring light here, so that as I come up to the uh, camera, it uh, produces, a, sort of, it fills in that gap. Those of you who are observant regarding lighting may notice that I've changed the position of these lights as well. It's completely different. It's all changing. Now, what's the best way to get this out? Can I just uh, pop that screw out there and lift this whole circuit board out? Don't know if this is going to work or not. I think that might be clipped and I think I might be onto plums here. No, it's actually just popped out. That's handy. Right. In fact, you know, I might just remove this bit of tape as well. And the LDR. Yeah, that also leaves a wee hole for the smoke to come out of when things go horribly wrong. So here are the LEDs. Let's uh, desolder those for a start. So the first thing I'm going to do to desolder them is I'm going to actually flow some fresh solder onto them. This is when I should have been a bit more organised, but that's okay. I'm never organised. Now, as polarity is marked in these, they've got a flat in the side that is the uh, cathode of the LED. That's good. So I'm going to start by flowing some solder on, because uh, if they're soldered with the lead-free solder, it tends to be quite an unpleasant, uh, it tends to be a very dry solder to desolder. So it actually helps greatly if you flow on some lead-based solder. I want to mention again, because I'm getting comments like, lead-based solder kills you. It doesn't, you know, I know so many people who have been working in the electronic industry for so long that... Um, and there's no obvious sign that they've had bad health effects. So uh, now I'm going to, I could actually, this is where it would be quite useful to get a bit of silicon sleeving but, uh, I'll, and sit it over the end of the LEDs. That's how I normally remove them, but I've, I've not been very well organised. So I'm just going to press the LED out by putting the solder iron across both the uh, leads simultaneously. And the LEDs, they've got quite generous holes for them, so the LEDs are popping out quite easily, which is good. Except the last one. The last one's not popping out yet. Oh, there it goes. See, all it took was me actually saying that to actually make it not work. So let's get some desoldering braid. And let's boost the desoldering braid with a little bit of flux. Just, uh, I'm going to use the flux pen and I'm going to make a terrible mess by it. Yes, I've made a terrible mess. But I put a bit more flux onto it because some of the desoldering braids aren't uh, very fluxy. And they work so much better if there's flux on them. They're supposed to have a dry flux in them that then activates when you heat them, but uh, some of the desoldering braids are uh, sold from uh, China. I mean, it all comes from China, I bet. But some of the cheaper ones sold on eBay are just a little bit lacking in the flux department, and there's, it's not that hard to add a wee bit more flux, and it just increases their solder-sucking ability greatly. I do have a desoldering pump. I actually find the desoldering braid uh, really effective. It's one of my favourite means of uh, getting solder off. The whole point is that it acts like a sponge and it basically wicks the uh, solder up, leaving the holes all completely clear. And they are all clear. Now I'm going to get the new LEDs and I'm going to put them in with the short lead going to the flat and just to make sure they don't drop out again, I'm going to put a slight kink, but 
I don't like putting LEDs in and bending the leads, or, or any component for that matter, in and just bending the leads tight back to actually hold them in place while I'm soldering them because it actually makes them quite hard to get out should you ever need to uh, replace them again. So that's the last one, and now I'm going to solder those in. And as always, I'm going to be using my technique of holding the component and the circuit board. Um, hopefully. This could be a bit footy. And the solder at the same time in one hand. Just because that's just how it happened. And I'll solder one pad, but not both of them. And the reason for that, it's a couple of reasons. Uh, by soldering one at a time, you don't overheat the component, and it also lets you just uh, align the component just by reflowing that solder joint. So that's uh, two out of the three with one solder pad done. And now the last one, and then I'll just check they're all square. It doesn't really 100% matter that if they're 100% square or not because uh, these are diffused and the light will fire out all directions from them. The original LEDs were the straw hat LEDs which have a very wide projection angle. It would have been nice to actually have the colour changing uh, straw hat LEDs but I don't think I've got any of those. Maybe I should buy some for stock just in case I ever need them. They're quite nice because they produce that pixel of light. But having said that, because the um, because it's red, green, blue colour changing LEDs, they actually produce three little pixels next to each other. And that just leaves one more solder joint there. OK, that's theoretically it. So what I'll do here is I'll put this back together right now and then I shall the video, actually start it running, or I'll try it out first, uh, but then leave it running um, for a while so the colours get random, and then I shall um, record a section for a while of it just running and doing its thing. So I'm going to put this screw back in. Might as well go back through the circuit board, it's kind of easy to do that. I'm going to clip this back in, and before I even close it up, I'm going to plug it in. Ooh, dangerous. I'm still experimenting a lot with this uh, new phone I've got, so things will change over time. Just uh, I'm not quite... This image what, that you're seeing at the moment... This image what you're seeing at the moment... The image that you're seeing at the moment is not the final... Uh, Result. I'm experimenting with different softwares as well. Oh, that's also why this video is in 720p because the particular package I'm trying at the moment uh, only offers that as one of the trial options before I've actually decided which one I'm going to go with. Right, let's uh, plug this in and see what happens. So the LEDs have all lit red. It doesn't look red. It looks uh, the colour temperature is absolutely so wrong in this video, but that's okay. We'll work it out. Okay, that's working right. Uh, so I'm going to pause now and then uh, let this mix up a bit. And I'm going to just film a section of it in this sort of dark so you can actually see the lights just to see what it looks like. So uh, to bring this up close to the camera, you'd be really impressed. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven death adapters stacked into each other. Um, and I'll just let you marvel at this for a while. It's quite nice, actually. It's actually really bright. And the colours just sort of merge. That's worked out pretty well. I think the Chinese are missing a trick here. I think they should be getting these colour-changing LEDs into their cloud lamps and the shamrocks as well. I have ordered a shamrock, by the way, the, sh the shamrock version of this little cloud lamp. And when that arrives, we can take a look at it. Um, it will be a different shape of circuit board inside, but I'm guessing that the circuitry will be the same. So, yeah, this is nice. I like that. That is really quite smart. Okay, I think that's enough chromatic clouds for the moment.